All right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bottom aligned <coughs> uh, grid using CSS grid. Now, this is sort of a tricky, mm, it's sort of a tricky maneuver because normally CSS grid aligns all the grid children to the top and not to the bottom. And you'll see the pattern that I'm looking for. Um, I'll show you one way around it, and then I'll show you why that's a bad idea. And then I will also show you what it looks like uh, whenever you just have uh, maybe just an image with no text um, and how that aligns perfectly. It's the text that sort of gets in the way and we have to account for. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry about the audio today. The My initial setup, my normal setup is... Uh, in my office and <clears throat> Chicago's having major winter storms so I'm not in the office today uh, but uh, this is something I was working on with a project uh, a site that I'm building right now and it's sort of a pattern that comes up because we work in the publishing business and so we're working with books and I'm often having to align the books to the bottom so when these elements these uh, gray boxes here get lined up in a grid I need them not to be aligned to the top because there are different sizes sometimes. You can see these are three different size blocks. Uh, I don't need them to be aligned to the top. I need them be, to be aligned to the bottom. So it's more acceptable for the tops of the books to be sort of stair-stepped or, or different sizes than it is for the bottom to be stair-stepped. So we want to make it look sort of like it's on a shelf or um, just that the bottom of the images are lined up even if there's some text that's a little bit different underneath. Uh, so I'm going to show you just sort of what that looks like. Here's the basic setup. I have two different, or actually three different grids here. So I have, this is what I want to use. So I want each of these groups right here to stay together. I want the image and I want the information underneath it, whether it's a link or just a uh, text. I want that to always be together. So when I'm in mobile view, I want those two pieces of text to be together. Uh, I have a second grid that shows you how you can do it, but I'll show you the limitation to that in mobile view. Uh, so we have our uh, grid boxes here. So these are our boxes. They're not separated out together. And then we have our grid information or our box information in just as more child elements of the grid. Now this is the limitation. When you get out here, it looks great. So each of these pieces of information like this one here, it will come up underneath this and this piece of information here will come up underneath the medium and it'll all line up like it's supposed to when you get out here and each of the elements is lined up. But the limitation of this is that once you get to a mobile view and everything sort of collapses on itself, then you have three items and then you have these three items uh, together and when they line up as a grid, they look great, but whenever you are in mobile view, then each of those pieces of information sort of separates out and becomes its own piece of information. <coughs> so then you lose the effect that you're looking for and you're gonna have to hide these and then you're gonna have to have some other, and you have to have this sort of formation here uh, where these, are, these pieces of information are hidden on a, a large screen but they show on a small screen. It's just you're writing more code than you necessarily should. And I think it's not gonna make as much sense um, as far as accessibility or if someone is with a screen reader. Um, keeping these items together is gonna make more sense. You can tell that they're a group and that this uh, text information belongs with this image. But down here, you just have these sort of three random images and then you have this information that's not directly correlated to those images they're only going to be visually correlated so to me that's not a good design pattern even though it actually works uh, once you get out to the um, larger grid and then lastly I just have sort of a, a clean grid with only the boxes and I'll show you how um, if that's all you have this is going to be super easy it's the text that seems to get into the way uh, each grid item is has a little background to it, 
uh, I have a small, medium, and large. So this is small, medium, and large. And essentially only the height is different between the three. So let's get in and let's build our grid. I'm going to make our grid happen at 600 pixels so that we can see the mobile view as opposed to the grid view. So I just make a media query and I say at media and a minimum width <coughs> of 600 pixels. Then I'm going to say grid, display grid. And then I'll do grid template columns. And I just want them to be just a simple three across grid. So repeat three and one at bar. Oh. And then I'm also going to put a, a little bit of a grid gap in there. Uh, this is sort of just from experience of doing this video a couple times, I know I need to do that. Uh, so now we have our grid number one. And you can see that we're aligning to the top, right? This is what I was telling you. But the bottoms are not lining up. But down here is where we want to line everything up along the bottoms of the image. Uh, down here we get some sort of bottom alignment because these things are no longer attached to these. Remember that they are their own uh, grid items here. So they're essentially being top aligned to one another but not bottom aligned. And then these uh, particular pieces are not being bottom aligned either. <coughs> and then here we just have the images by themselves and they are being top aligned as well. So if you're not very familiar with um, alignment inside of CSS Grid, it works sim very similar to Flexbox, if you're familiar with that. So the terminology is a little bit different. So you start with um, Flex Start is Flexbox, but Start is the terminology for uh, this default behavior, where you line everything up at the top or at the beginning of uh, the grid item. End is if you want to bottom align everything. There's a centering. There's a one called stretch. So there's lots of different um, alignment tools that you can use. Uh, we are going to focus on bottom aligning. So that means on our grid we say align all of the grid items to the end. And when we do that you can see that there's already a shift. So instead of aligning them to the top, it's uh, trying to align everything to the bottom. Um, you can see here that it almost works with this. So it aligns all of our images because they're all of our grid items. So all the children of the grid are going to be aligned to the end. So if we have all of our items aligned to the bottom here, then we've done the same thing here because they're also children of the grid. Okay, remember we separated these out. These pieces of information are all together, so it's also bottom aligning. But because of that bottom alignment, and these are actually a part of uh, each individual grid cell, then it's aligning the baseline of the text and not the baseline of the images. Okay, so we get a little bit of different uh, sort of alignment here. And then here, this this works perfectly because there's nothing below. This is the only thing inside the grid uh, cell, and so it works very well. Let's give this a little bit of a margin so we can see. Um, give the grid some margin so you can see down at the bottom. These are uh, perfectly aligned at the bottom. So if only you have images, uh, this is a really easy pattern. You can just stop here and move on with your life. Um, Again, you can see that this does work. Um, and maybe if we come into, uh, if we were to give our, <coughs> excuse me, our information here, a particular, um, so let's say grid group. And the nth child uh, of four. If we did something like uh, align self, let's see if this works. We have a way to align the content inside of each of our grid children. Uh, so if we say align self uh, start, 
this might actually pull it up. Okay, so you see that it pulls it up uh, here. A line, if you put on the align items onto or justify content onto grid, then it's going to take all the children and it's going to use this alignment for all of the children. That's why everything was being aligned to the bottom, you can see. Now, if I go to each individual grid item and I say, so I'm choosing um, the grid group, you can see the grid group here, that's the child item of the grid. Uh, if I go to the fourth one, which is what in child four, it chooses this one right here. This is in child five, in child six. And then I align the self, this particular grid item, I align the self to start, then that pulls it up to the top. If I do end, then that's the uh, behavior that we already have. And if I did center, then I could center align all of these elements here. So this is the behavior that I want. I want it to be start. And then if I did the same thing uh, for the others, um, I could just do this. I think if I do that, okay, so I have uh, the children four, five, and six, I have aligned them to their own uh, grid item container. Um, I've aligned them to the top. So this gets us pretty close to what we want, and then we would have to manipulate maybe the grid gap or something like that to remove this gap here. Um, but like I said, the problem that you run into is, is it a mobile view? And when you come down to the mobile view, you can see that our, our three pieces of information, because they're stacked together here, uh, and our grid is no longer together, um, we have our three boxes stacked together, and then we have our three pieces of information stacked together. So even though it looks great, when you come out here, and this is sort of the pattern that we want, I also want to write as little code as possible. So when I get up here, I want these two pieces of information to stay together in the grid group. Uh, and it, I don't have the ability to align this particular piece of information because it's not, it's only in one, it's all in one grid cell. Where this is one cell, this is one cell, one cell, one cell. So there's six pieces, or six cells here, and I only have three cells here. So how do we get around uh, this particular problem? And so I'm just going to focus in on this top section here which is uh, our grid here. You can see that even how much code we have to write is, is half. It's half of what we have to write down here. So when we come in here, um, I want to target the information. Okay, so this is what I'm going to target here. I've sort of found this out through trial and error, trying different things, trying to manipulate the grid. <coughs> and what I want to target is uh, this element right here, this element right here. So this is going to be our, we could say, our grid group P. So that's how we're going to target in the CSS. Uh, we're going to say, uh, we'll come up underneath our grid group and we'll just add a P since we can do nesting with SAS. And <coughs> We're going to target the P elements, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each of these P elements a specific height. And what this is going to do, it's going to, sh so right now the baseline is the baseline of this information. Since all of these, all of this information is in one cell, then wherever the baseline for our text is, that's becoming the baseline for the cell itself. And we are aligning the cells to the bottom, to the end. So what we need to do is we need to sort of shift the bottom of our cells. And the way that we can do that is we can create height on each of these uh, elements. So let's just start with like uh, three rem. And you can already see that because we've given height to these elements, 
it's now shifted everything to exactly the way that we want it to be. We want all of these elements to line up with each other and we're okay with a little bit of ragged bottom, but what we don't want is a ragged top. So uh, three might not actually be enough. If I put a background on this, you can see what's happening. Um, so you can see here that when I take this away and it's auto, you can see that the baseline is here for each cell. When I add the height, now the baseline is being shifted down a little bit. You can see here, uh, if we make that more extreme, then you can see here that the baseline has, been, has gone from the bottom of our text to now right here. So this is now the baseline for each of these cells, okay? So all we've done is we've sort of uh, created a new bottom for each cell. And because everything is aligned to the bottom, uh, this space is unimportant. It's all being aligned to the bottom here. So that if we took away, if we made this start, and we align all of our items to the top, you can see that everything gets shifted up. So our our cell is only as big as this. So it's our the height of our gray box plus the height of this P element. That's how big our, our grid cell is. <clears throat> and because we, we care more about this space than this space, then we just <coughs> we use uh, a line to the end. And so we're okay with a little bit of space down here, but what we really want is to get this nice straight line right here. And whenever we go into a mobile view, this is the advantage, is that in a mobile view, our information stays together. So that if you wanted to um, just get rid of this information, you would put this, um, you would put this all sort of under this media query. So now we have all of our information sort of hugging each other tightly this P height is not going to kick in until our grid kicks in. So at 600 pixels, whammo, we wind up with a nice bottom here. And we can get rid of the pink so that you can see it. So we wind up exactly with the pattern that we're looking for, where these elements are being lined up with one another. These elements are being lined up also with this bottom edge. So you have a top alignment here, you have a bottom alignment here. And when you are in a mobile view, all of our information still stays together. So our image and our information stays all together. So this is a little bit more of a, a complex sort of situation for CSS Grid. Um, this is maybe the first attempt that you would make at it. But again, there are some limitations here as far as mobile first. And you're going to have to write extra code and do some hide show in order to make this uh, happen. But you can see that all of our information is here. Everything is aligned perfectly. And if all you're doing is images, you know, you have it easy. It's the text that's really messing things up. Uh, if you have any questions about um, this sort of pattern or what I'm doing, uh, or if you have any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear uh, what you think, or is this a useful pattern to you? And um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, the channel has been growing, which has been uh, a real great thing. And uh, I hope that these grid videos are helping you to see a little bit more of the ease of use and the power uh, that CSS Grid has to solve some of the problems that we've had just a really difficult time solving in the past. Um, all right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.